I, w- I wanted to go back to Angel Mike, the firefighter Mike Lynch, because I went out to his home in Long Island because I wanted his widow, Denise, to hear directly from me what her hero angel husband was doing at the end of his life. And when I went and sat on their couch in their living room and I told her the story of, of his heroism, there were two little boys crawling around on the floor. Brand new little boys. And I told her, I pointed at them, and I gave her my business card, and I said, one day when those boys are older and they want to know about their dad, tell them to reach out to me, and I'll tell them about their dad's last moment. Uh, about five years ago, I got a, an email from Michael Francis Lynch, Jr., who now was a 21, 22 years old. And he's like, I did everything right with my life. My dad would be proud. Um, I got my degree. I've done everything. Now I want to know about my dad. And I want to talk with you. So we met at our favorite place, O'Hara's. And we drank beer for about five hours together and talked and cried and laughed. And got to know each other. And um, one of the things he asked me was, please never leave me. Because he had been, you know, left alone. And I promised him I would never leave him. And I said, what do you want to do with your life? He said, I want to be, um, I want to be a Green Beret. And I said, that's awesome. I said, don't sign anything. You don't always get the straight facts, so let take some time. Let me take you on a tour of the East Coast to go meet all my friends in the different branches of the of the military and the intelligence community, and and we did that. And all of a sudden, Mike Francis Lynch Jr. had a whole tribe. of uncles and aunts uh, who all took his phone number and showed him the love the community has for, for him. Um, some pretty cool people, man. Some cool Navy SEALs, some cool Delta guys. Um, some cool people from the intelligence community. Uh, and uh, he came back and we were sitting with my one of my best friends, uh, Navy SEAL Jason Redman and, and some other folks. And I said, okay, you did what I asked. Now what do you want to do? He said, I want to be a SEAL. I said, that's what I thought you would say. <laughs> But I wanted, I wanted him to come to it himself, you know. And uh, so we started mentoring him. Uh, and we wound up sending him uh, to a group of guys down in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. They own a gym down there uh, called Trident uh, Fitness. And uh, first they gave him, uh, as they would, a very hard time. Uh, and then once they realized he was not going to wilt, um, they started partnering with him and training him. And it was guys from all different branches of special forces. Um, and they, they, they literally gave him mentors from each group. And these guys drowned him five times because he refused to come off the bottom of the pool because his father would have been disappointed in him. They literally had to dive in and pull his body out five times 
and do CPR and bring him back because the kid was so stubborn. Uh, and he wanted to make everyone proud of him, which we all were and are. Uh, so he went through all of this for years. And just now, a few weeks ago, he called me and said, uh, I signed up. And I said, okay, what'd you sign up for? And he said, what is it? What is the contract? Uh, 18 x-ray, I think it is. 18 x-ray. He said, I signed an 18 x-ray uh, uh, um, contract to be a Green Beret. So he's in. He's probably starting basic right around now. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, he will be, he will be one of the greatest military um, special forces, I'll call them heroes, uh, that they're ever going to see. That's my opinion. Uh, he is driven from a, du a different place, somewhere deep in here and deep in here uh, because of uh, losing his dad such a young age and his dad uh, being such a, an American hero. Um, so I'm... I'm really proud of Mike. Uh, I, I'm so proud of Mike. Um, and we should be doing that for all of our heroes, kids. Um, every, every one of them that grew up without a dad or a mom because of 9-11 uh, or, you know, that includes the 7,000 plus mili military heroes, volunteer military heroes who, uh, you know, who gave their lives for this country. Um, every one of their children, those gold star kids, it's our responsibility as a community to take care of them and mentor them and become their tribe, um, become their aunts and uncles and big brothers and big sisters. Uh, we owe it uh, to them, to their families. If you like this clip and you want to watch another, click here. And if you want to watch the full interview, click here.